How Tsunamis Can Alter Underwater Ecosystems Have you ever wondered how tsunamis reshape the hidden world beneath our oceans? Dive deep into the explosive symphony that alters underwater ecosystems. Beneath the serene surface, tsunamis brew havoc, silently orchestrating an epic tragedy for marine life. Let's unveil the submerged realm's transformation from wave generation to coastal impacts. What happens to marine organisms during a tsunami? Are animals able to get out of the way fast enough? Beneath the ocean's enigmatic depths, a cataclysmic event takes shape, forged by the tumultuous forces of the deep. Tsunamis born of underwater upheavals surge forth with fury, a relentless juggernaut of devastation. Life continues in blissful ignorance, where darkness reigns and the seafloor stretches to unfathomable depths. The initial tremors go unnoticed as the surface rises by mere inches. To these ancient creatures, it is as if the world itself remains undisturbed. Yet as the tsunami's malevolent journey progresses towards shallower waters, its wrath amplifies. In a sudden crescendo, it strikes with unimaginable force. Some unfortunate souls among the marine inhabitants meet their end swiftly, mercifully crushed by the unstoppable tide. For others, the ordeal is far from over. In the wake of the tsunami's fury, their once pristine habitats lie in ruins, marred by devastation and debris. The waters that were once their lifeblood become tainted, leading to a slow, agonizing decline for those who survive the initial onslaught. This is a stark reminder that, while tsunamis may go unnoticed on the surface, beneath the waves, an epic tragedy unfolds. A silent, catastrophic symphony that forever alters the lives of the ocean's hidden denizens. What factors contribute to the generation and propagation of tsunamis? And how do their speed and height change as they move from deep ocean to shallower waters near the shore? The most devastating tsunamis are triggered by seismic activity that ruptures the Earth's crust just beneath the ocean floor during an earthquake. This phenomenon is particularly prevalent along the collision boundaries between tectonic plates beneath the Indian and Pacific Oceans. When this occurs, the ocean floor experiences various types of displacement, including upward, sideways, or downward movements. Regardless of the direction, these movements displace an enormous volume of water, creating a seemingly inconspicuous wave on the ocean surface, typically less than a meter high. However, this wave boasts an extraordinary wavelength, spanning hundreds of kilometers. It propagates outward in all directions, propelled by its momentum, and can attain staggering speeds of up to 900 kilometers per hour when traversing the deep ocean, where water depths can reach as much as 4.5 kilometers, or 2.8 miles. As the tsunami approaches shallower waters near the shore at depths of approximately 10 meters or 39 feet, its velocity gradually increases to 35 to 40 kilometers per hour, somewhere between 21 and 25 miles per hour. Nevertheless, its height can dramatically increase, reaching nearly 10 meters. When a tsunami becomes confined within a bay or a neutral harbor, its peak can surge to over 30 meters or 100 feet, magnifying its destructive potential. What are the effects of tsunamis on the seafloor, including erosion and their impact on benthic ecosystems? And could you offer an illustrative example of such an occurrence? Tsunami waves at their base possess the capacity to modify the underwater landscape. They can wear away the sediment layers on the seabed and cause significant harm to the ecosystems residing on the ocean floor, known as benthic ecosystems. These ecosystems typically comprise invertebrates, such as crustaceans, worms, and snails, which inhabit the seabed and play a crucial role in mixing its sediments. In certain instances, the tsunami's force can upheave substantial portions of the seafloor. 
A notable example occurred in Japan during the March 2011 Tohoku earthquake tsunami, when the eroded sediments were transported to other locations, forming vast dunes on the ocean floor. How do tsunamis affect coral reefs and intertidal environments? And what are the challenges in balancing coastal protection with preserving these ecosystems? Coral reefs are natural barriers against tsunami waves as they approach the shoreline. However, the devastating tsunami that resulted from the Indonesian earthquake in December 2004 severely impacted coral reefs along the coastlines of the Indian Ocean. Subsequent investigations revealed that these reefs were already in a state of decline due to destructive fishing practices, such as using dynamite and cyanide compounds to catch fish. Four years following the tsunami, there was a noticeable recovery in the health of the coral reefs, with signs of regeneration. Coastal seagrass, mangroves, and wetlands in the intertidal zone are vulnerable to tsunamis. Before the 2011 tsunami in northern Japan's Sendai coast, seagrass grew as tall as two-story buildings underwater. Marine ecologist Masahiro Nakauka observed new grass shoots two years after the tsunami, but estimated a decade for a full recovery. However, building seawalls and breakwaters as tsunami barriers may hinder revival by cutting off nutrient-rich mountain water flowing into the sea. It's a delicate balance between protecting coasts and preserving these vital ecosystems. In the depths of our oceans, tsunamis sculpt a world of tragedy and resilience. Let's work together to ensure these underwater ecosystems' future, harmonizing nature's forces with the preservation of life beneath the waves. Your support helps spread awareness and inspires positive change. Subscribe to our channel and share this video with others passionate about understanding and protecting our precious underwater ecosystems. Thank you for being a part of our mission.